everybody, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Disseminated Intravascular Coagulation, DIC. So let's get into it. So two things are happening at the same time in DIC and they are kind of opposites. Sometimes if you're reading your textbook, you might also see this referred to as consumption coagulopathy. So what that means is it's consuming, it's breaking down the things that can cause clots. So there is a decrease in platelets and other clotting factors. At the same time, thromboplastin is activating widespread clotting, which can lead to organ ischemia, so lack of oxygen lack of red blood cells and oxygen to our organs, which can lead to organ damage, right? And then also our healthy red blood cells, they get in the middle of this, right? So they're just making their way through the blood vessel like they would, but now this blood vessel is full of all these blood clots and it causes them to start to break down as well. So at the same time, we have too much clots and not enough clots going on. So they're kind of opposites and they're occurring at the same time. And as you can imagine, that's very dangerous. This is a life-threatening condition and it causes both internal and external bleeding. Let's talk about some risk factors for developing DIC. People who've recently had a blood transfusion, so this could be a reaction to that. Cancer, especially if you have leukemia. Pancreatitis or liver disease. Pregnancy, this is the big one we talk about in OB class. So different conditions like having a placental abruption can send you into DIC. So it's very important that we treat these pregnant women and watch out for those complications to make sure this doesn't happen, right? Because we don't want our new mamas in the ICU. A hemangioma, especially if it's big, the bigger it is, the higher your risk. And then recently having any sort of surgery or exposure to any sort of like general anesthetic. Some signs and symptoms of DIC include, of course, things you've probably guessed, blood clots, um, bleeding. And we're talking about bleeding, we're talking about internal and external bleeding. And they're bleeding from multiple locations. So they could be bleeding from their gums. They could be bleeding from their eyes. If they had an IV, they could be bleeding from their IV site. So bleeding from multiple places. They might be confused or have memory loss. They don't know what's going on. They have shortness of breath. Easily bruised. They have a high fever. They could develop hematomas or petechiae. They will be hypotensive if you check their vitals. And then the big thing, uh, which we kind of talked about in the beginning of this video, is it can progress. It can progress to organ failure, which will be represented by some of these signs and symptoms, like the shortness of breath, like the petechiae, things like that. So what's causing this organ failure are those blood clots. So blood clots forming all over the body, which is causing lack of oxygen to those organs, okay? So you're gonna have things like strokes and heart attacks and pulmonary embolisms. All these things can happen as a result of this. So we wanna be on the lookout for the symptoms of those things and we wanna try and control this bleeding. When it comes to labs and testing for this, the first thing we're gonna do is a CBC. And the CBC is going to show us, if they have this, a decreased hemoglobin and hematocrit, decreased fibrinogen, and decreased platelets, which makes sense, right? We expect to see these things. We're also going to do a PTT. It's going to be prolonged. Again, that makes sense, right? So the clotting is slower. It's slower for the blood to clot, and that's going to be reflected in these results. They're gonna do a D-dimer, which is going to check the, you know, the breakdown, the products of clotting. It's gonna be increased. And then the INR and the PT is also going to be increased. They're gonna be elevated. A DIC assessment when it comes to labs is basically all of these things. So we're going to be looking for platelet count, your D-dimer, your fibrin degradation products, which is very similar to a, a D-dimer. 
uh, fibrinogen levels, PT, and PTT levels. So when we're assessing for DIC, these are the labs we're looking for. And they kind of make sense, right? Because these are the labs that are telling us about our red blood cells and our clotting factors. DIC is a very serious condition for a patient to be experiencing, so our nursing interventions are going to be key into helping them get better. So likely, you will be doing transfusions. You might be doing red blood cells, you might be doing platelets, you might be doing plasma. So be prepared to give a transfusion for these patients. Very good assessment of the bleeding. Like I said, they're gonna be bleeding from multiple locations, from their gums, from their um, IV site, internally, right? GI bleeds, things like that. So doing a very good assessment of the bleeding. They're gonna be on strict INO. They are going to have a catheter placed in, a Foley catheter, so that we can measure their urine output. We are also going to be looking for blood in the urine, that's called hematuria. A big thing that could happen in DIC is it can send the patient into kidney failure. So this is something that's going to help us monitor the kidneys and see how they're doing. Of course, vital signs, right? We want to monitor those vital signs, especially that blood pressure. Now, if they're pregnant, and this is happening, right, because this can happen to anybody when you're pregnant or not, but we see it a lot in the OB world. So if your patient is pregnant, some other things we want to monitor that are special, the baby, right? So fetal heart rate, we want to keep them on the fetal heart rate monitor continuously. Um, we want to put mom in the left sideline position because that's going to increase blood flow to the uterus, to the placenta. So if this is a pregnant patient with DIC, these are kind of two special things we're going to do for them. Other patients. Um, we're still going to give them oxygen. We're going to give them 8 to 10 liters of oxygen via face mask. We're going to monitor those labs. Those labs we just talked about, we're going to do serial blood studies on these patients frequently to see if it's getting worse, if it's getting better, what's going on with their labs. And of course, medications. So some medications you as the nurse might be given are heparin, antithrombin-3, analgesics, narcotics, and anticoagulants, which makes sense, right? Since we know what the problem is here. Too much clots and also not enough clots, right? And then of course this is going to cause ischemia, so lack of oxygen, and what happens to the body when there's a lack of oxygen? Pain, right? So we need to treat that pain that the patient's experiencing as well. So this is DIC. Really big deal, really dangerous, life-threatening condition that your patient could have. The big thing here is monitoring for it and trying to prevent it if we can. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.